This is Mark O'Brien, co-founder of Project Libre, along with Laurent Cruchino. It would be great if you could assist in promoting this video and also Project Libre on social media. The video today is on an important concept for effective project management and monitoring progress in your projects. It is primarily the status date and how that impacts tracking both your schedule and your cost performance. Why is the status date important? It is kind of like a company reporting their quarterly financial numbers on Wall Street. It's well after the last day of the quarter, but the numbers reflect up to the status date of the quarter end, even though the date releasing is later. Project managers report and track projects for both financial and schedule performance. It could be each Monday at a status meeting, or it could be monthly, quarterly updates for stakeholders or customers. I will show how this gives a perspective for analyzing how it is uh, for project performance. This is both for schedule and cost. And how do we make this relative? Are we over or under budget? Are we ahead or behind schedule? And what is it relative to? There are two key components. One is baselining, so that we have a snapshot, or in this digital age, let's use a throwback and say it's a Polaroid of our plan, schedule, and cost based on that scope at the time. The other relates to our perspective for analysis, similar to the Wall Street example, on what date this is analyzing, similar to the quarter close for a company, but this is for your project. It is often not used properly, and it is the status date. We will also cover a few other topics, including how to reschedule your tasks to a new status or current date using the update function. Let's dig into this a little deeper. You can see on my screen currently, I have a, a previous project from a previous video. And what I've done is I've added a, a subscreen down below showing a cumulative cost graph, showing a couple of tracking metrics here. But let's go and start from the, uh, the top. I'll enter a new project here and I'll say it's status date. I'll give myself uh, the manager. And we can set a start date here and obviously forward or, or reverse schedule. I've gone through this before, but if you deselect this, you enter a finish date and Project Libre will let you know when you actually need to start the, the project. But I'm not going to start it today. I'm going to use the drop down and I'm going to start it on March 1st and say OK. And let me enter a, a series of tasks. Uh, I'll just do summary. One, two... three, four, and five. And let me give these dates. I'll say this is 10 days, 10 days. Uh, look at a milestone. Uh, one thing is if I highlight these tasks, you probably have already seen this before, but if I go to task, I can indent and create a summary task. So now the summary task is created and I can collapse or expand that. Another thing that we didn't really go through before, but on linking tasks, let me highlight and shift and select all of them. And I'm going to go through on tasks and I'm gonna link these. As they're all highlighted, they will link in serial, okay? That's not always desired, but in a large project, it is beneficial. It saves you from uh, you know, either typing the information in the spreadsheet or linking. So now that I've got most of these, I can click on the link and remove it. And you can see that does that. And now I can grab from one task to another and do the manual linking and set the project up linking that way. We are going to be tracking both schedule and cost. So let me enter a resource and assign the resource to a uh, set of tasks. I will Enter Olivia, scroll over, and give her a rate of $100 an hour, a bargain for Olivia. Uh, go back over to task and the Gantt chart, and I will assign Olivia to uh, these tasks. I can say assign resource, Olivia, assign, and you can see that on the Gantt chart, Olivia is now assigned to all of these uh, tasks. One thing I want to do is add some columns in my spreadsheet for tracking this. There is a tracking uh, Gantt chart that you can, you can actually come through, and these are all the different spreadsheet formats that are 
set there. There's earn value cost and schedule, etc. I'm going to use the standard one. Right click and say insert a column. And I'm going to insert the budgeted cost of work performed. Insert column again and do budgeted cost of work scheduled. And then here I'm going to once again insert a column that some of the defaults will have this already. I'll hit P to go down and I'll do percent complete here so that we can see these different things. I can resize this so it all fits in better. And now we are, we are set. I can now come through and highlight everything and say I'm going to save the baseline. And again, when you're saving a baseline, you can save up to 10 baselines and you can do it for the entire project or selected tasks. We are going to baseline for the entire project and then you can see the, uh, the bar at the bottom there. If we look at our spreadsheet, the tracking of cost of the baseline cost is displayed here. Uh, let's focus on task one. Olivia is assigned at $100 per hour for the 80 hours or 10, 10 day task. So as expected, the baseline cost is $8,000 when completed, but it does not signal how we are doing on the task. It starts on March 1st, so on March 5th, 50% of the 10 day task should be complete. However, we need to set the status date to say we are calculating what percentage of the task is scheduled to be completed by a date. So let's set our status date March 5th. And when we do that, you will see the BCWS is $4,000. The budgeted cost of work scheduled, meaning we should have consumed on schedule $4,000 in, in cost or 40 hours of Olivia's work if on schedule. What if it's a different status date? Let's change this to March 2nd close that and you can see that the BCWS has now changed because on schedule per that status date uh, we would only have completed a couple days of, of that work. For simplicity's sake let's change this back to the fifth so that it's 50 percent complete. So what we're saying again is that 50 percent of task one should be complete um, through that status date uh, let's go through on percent complete and say instead of 50% complete, it is only 10% complete. Now that's the budgeted cost of work performed. So if we were on schedule, we would have completed $4,000 worth of work or half the work. However, we are not on schedule. We've only completed 10% of it. So our budgeted cost of work performed is uh, $800. So to recap, our task is baseline to cost $8,000, but that does nothing to let us know the performance so far. We set the status date halfway through task one, and it tells us that 50% of the cost should, have, should be scheduled to be incurred at that point, which is our budgeted cost of work schedule, BCWS. That tells us how far we should be in the task, but perhaps Olivia took a couple days off with her grandfather on vacation, so started late and is only 10% done. The task may not be over budget, as for two days there was zero cost, so we're still on budget, but we were behind schedule as noted by the budgeted cost of work performed. It's well below what was scheduled to be completed. Let's pivot a little bit on rescheduling the work. Let's move the status date to the 10th. So go to information, status date, and let's move that to the 10th, and I'll close. If the project is running on schedule, there's a shortcut for updating tasks. I can say update, and I can update through that. I'll say update through the 10th, and say for the entire project or selected task, say OK. And you can see that progress has now been completed through the 10th. Another feature of update is if Olivia does take more time off, for instance, uh, we can reschedule uh, remaining work. Let's say remaining work after the 25th of March for the entire project. And what will happen, you can see that task one has been split and all work has now been shifted after the 25th. 
A couple of uh, wrap-up items. Um, I put the finish offset column in there as well. Let me come through on our task one and change it from 10 days to 12 days. What you can see when that extends is the project finish has now been extended by two days and the tasks have been extended by two days as well. If I go into task three and instead of seven days, instead of five days, I make that seven days. I can close that and we can take a look again. It's been extended. However, even though task three has been extended by four days, or by two days, um, for a total extension of four days, it, because it's a non-critical task, it actually does not affect any more of the offset on the finish of the entire project. Uh, to put a bow on this, if we go to the information on the product project, there's a number of different areas that are beneficial, such as uh, the benefit and the risk and uh, in the desktop, it's useful for integrating with other solutions, and we'd be interested in how you're using it and integrating with Project Libre with other solutions. These fields are also imported into Project Libre Cloud, and in the portfolio dashboard, we have a useful bubble chart uh, viewing all project risk across all projects and benefits for each project. Um, we can also take a look at the summary uh, statistics of all of the um, project information, and let me show one other thing. I'm going to switch projects. I have a, a previous project here, and I'm showing the same information, the baseline cost, budgeted cost to work performed, and scheduled uh, in a chart form as well. So you can track that over time in a chart or obviously in the columns as well. So in summary, knowing your budget and percent complete is not a full view of project performance without understanding the context. 30% Complete may be ahead of schedule or it may be well behind schedule, even though both may not actually be over budget since work hours may not have been performed, just delayed. It is a combination of baselining your project for a budget, setting a status date for where you are evaluating, and then ensuring percent complete is updated for tasks. Then you can understand the context of your project progress. There's a lot more to this, but wanted to cover it. Project Libre has a lot more to do in this area, and the cloud version is a multi-project solution, very useful for that. Viewing this information across all projects will allow overall management of your projects. However, for your desktop project, it's important to understand that your real progress on the project, and this can help. Once again, Project Libre is free and open source. We work very hard to provide this for the global community, and we would appreciate your support with social media. We also, as noted, will be releasing a cloud version and working hard to get that out. Have a great day.